slow, but I might have to cut it off if it's not sending an HD picture, so. Okay. We'll see in a second. You can go ahead and mute now. For the next hour and a half in Sioux Falls, it will be raining. Welcome to Wild Card Thursday from South Dakota. Alongside Charles Doherty on stats, Stephen Hacker is my analyst. I am Cameron Irvine. And Wild Card Thursday rolls on. How you doing, Stephen? 
I'm doing great, Pam. Happy to be here. The weather's a little ugly, but playoff football is exciting nonetheless. You know, it's kind of weird. You go from Stephen Mullinex to Stephen Hacker. I don't even have to change your first name. And uh, sure. thanks for uh, thanks for accommodating for me. Well, I'm happy to be here. It's my first playoff game to call, so uh, I'm really excited. And it should be a great game. We'll head down to the field for the coin toss and then get things started. You're watching the SFL playoffs on YouTube. Las Vegas wants heads. Good. Captains are out there, including Thomas Raman Jr., John Blades calling it. It's tails, so Sioux Falls will win the toss and defer to the second half. So Sioux Falls will receive to start the ball game. And uh, Mr. Hacker, what, uh, what are your keys? Well, my key points for today is uh, an interesting fact is Sioux Falls has won two of the last three games, including the season 11 playoffs, and Las Vegas is 0-3 at Sioux Falls all time. Now, uh, Las Vegas has seven takeaways, uh, plus seven on the season, and they're also, they've allowed 1,743 yards. So a key point for them today is going to be to slow down Colin Hart. Uh, the guy's an absolute monster, gets the ball all day, every day. Uh, for the Sioux Falls Sparrows, they have negative five takeaways on the year, but they've only allowed 993 rush yards. So Robert Redford's going to have a huge workload for him today uh, to get past this defense. We're ready to go in Sioux Falls, and the Sparrows kick it away to Max Jackson from the 11-yard line. And for the Fury, they will start on offense at the 30. And uh, let us know how everything is sounding uh, as we uh, as we move through and uh, get our new crew settled here on Wild Card Thursday. Thomas Rahman is your quarterback for Las Vegas in the black helmets, white jerseys, black numbers with the yellowish orange trim, the red flames down the side. For Sioux Falls, all black here at home. And the handoff to Robert Redford starts things off. Redford breaks a tackle and picks up five. Uh, get the carry. Definitely with the rain coming down, I would expect to see a heavy load for the running backs here today. 10.35 to go in the first quarter. A five-yard run for Redford. Tahanke asks if this is the AAF. Unfortunately, it is not for those that love the AAF, but it's the SFL, and we're in the playoffs, and Redford's got a one-yard pickup. That's Nick Fargo. Uh, making the tackle along with Alex Parker, the dynamic linebacking duo for Sioux Falls. Yeah, Sioux Falls linebackers do a really good job uh, protecting that second level for the Sioux Falls defense. Nick Fargo with 113 tackles this season. Third down and four at the 36. And Rahman has some time. Good puck at the pass is caught by John Blades. A one-hander at midfield gets to the Sparrow 49, and that's a way to start things off for Thomas Rahman in this passing attack. Yeah, three positive plays and you get the first down. That's the way you come out uh, on a, on a, a, against your opponent. You gotta come out and set the tone for your offense. First down and 10 at the 49 yard line. Nine and a half to go in the first quarter. Vegas is on the move. They go empty this time and look at the protection again. Rahman's pass is knocked up in the air and incomplete. Nick Fargo getting down the field to knock that one away in his fourth season. Yeah, Nick Fargo, generally you're going to see him get a lot of tackles for losses. He's going to do a lot of the, the dirty work in the trenches. Uh, Alex Parker gets a lot of the deflections, but that's going to be Nick Fargo's sixth deflection on the year. So second and 10 at the Sparrow 49. Las Vegas is 0-3 in Sioux Falls all time, including 0-1 in the playoffs. They met last year in this wild card round as Rahman takes three steps back, flips it out to Rob Redford, and Redford will pick up Four to make it a third and manageable six. That's Nick Fargo again on the play making the stop. Yeah, and I like Vegas' approach here. Uh, coming out, running the ball, feeding Redford early. He had the one completion to Blades, but I, I would continue to give the ball to Redford. More receivers again here. Brett Funks at the top of the screen. John Blades at the bottom. Corners are well off. That's John Barnhart and Greg Barnhart on the outside. Back to throw. Raman throws an out route to Funk. And Funk had to adjust his body to the foot uh, to the pass. And it 
leaves him two yards short of the first down, and I don't think you can go for this too early. Yeah, I'd send out the punt unit here, and that was an interesting throw. Uh, maybe the rain affected that just a little bit, but yeah, you, the, the corners were way off. Uh, it was a good route ran and just maybe slipped out of his hands and, and took the receiver out of bounds a little bit earlier than he needed to go. Oh man, I'd be stunned if they went for this. Fourth and yeah. a long two at the Sparrow 41. I don't think Sioux Falls is very fooled. They do put three in the backfield. Uh, but Raman's going to bleed the clock down and call a timeout, burning a very early timeout. And I'm not sure anybody in this building thought they were actually going to go for that. Yeah, just a little bit of trickery there, trying to see how uh, honest the defense was going to be. Uh, interesting, you know, you burned a timeout on your first drive. We'll see if that comes back to bite him in the, in the butt at all here in the first half. Better to do that uh, in the first half than the second in terms of burning that timeout. We'll see what Dustin McRack can do on this punt. Uh, he has a knack for pinning teams inside the five. That's A.J. Levy back to return. And McRack will put this one high into the air, and Levy's going to let this go at the 10, and it's going to bounce to the 1, Ooh. and it's going to roll into the end zone as Vegas could not stop the ball in time. Tough break for the Fury early, and Julian Tyree will come out for his first offensive series tonight. Here are, are Tyree's career numbers. He's fourth all-time in passing yards, fifth all-time in passing touchdowns, 27,683 passing yards for Tyree in his career. Three in the backfield for Sioux Falls to start things off. They've also got a fantastic running back in Colin Hart. Three in the backfield, Hart going to get a carry. And Hart along the left side got a couple of great blocks, and Hart gets a first down out of the 31. An 11-yard pickup on his first carry of the night. Max Jackson on the tackle. Yeah, I expect to see a lot of Colin Hart. I, I 30, 30 plus touches tonight. It's a big game for the Sioux Falls Sparrows. I, I would expect him to, to touch it uh, a lot on the ground, and it's probably going to end up with five or six receptions on the day as well. Hart off to a very strong start. As uh, Steven mentioned, we expect to see him out there early and often. We'll see how Vegas can combat him. This is a 4 4 defensive look for the Fury, and. Uh, Tyree's going to drop back the pass and dump that one over the middle. That pass is complete to Craig Hearn, the tight end, who's really come on as of late. Another first down for Sioux Falls. Yeah, I like seeing this here. You know, Sioux Falls came out and uh, instantly gets a, gets a first down. So I'd, I'd like to see how they, uh, how they react on this first and 10 now. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Sparrows on their opening drive. 7.23 to go in the first quarter. Sioux Falls on the move with a receiver to either side. Tyree going to drop the throw three steps, and he fires a quick route. Caught for another first down to the Vegas 42-yard line. That is Ray Lynn making that reception, who was picked up just a few weeks ago. That yeah, was good recognition by Tyree. Found the open receiver. Uh, Tyree's completing 73% of his passes this season, so he's very efficient when he gets the ball out of his hand. So look at Ray Lynn. He's going to go to the sideline for this play. Three plays, three first downs for Sioux Falls. Got three in the pattern in the backfield for Tyree. Seven in the box, actually eight in the box for Vegas, and the handoff goes to Hart, and Hart this time's wrapped up by big Mike Fats Johnson, only a pickup of one to bring up second and nine. That's the best defensive play for Vegas on this opening series. And if your Sioux Falls running it, uh, Fats Johnson's not, not the greatest plan. Uh, he's got 18 tackles for a loss and 13 sacks on the season. So he's a big monster over there, gobbles up a bunch of plays. Two receivers over the short side left. The line shifts from left to right. Haven't seen a lot of Colin Hart on the opening drive. Second and nine, here's Hart again. And Hart is slammed down by Johnson. A loss of one in the backfield that I believe, what is that, 19 now tackles for loss, 20 this season? Yeah, he's all over the place, man. You know, if you, if you try to run at him, he's going to get past his – if you if he's got a one-on-one -on -one with a, a guard or a tackle, he's going to blow right by him, and he's going to blow up any play that you run at him. Now it's third down and 10. Vegas backing off, just five in the box at the Fury 42-yard line. Halfway through the first quarter, we're still scoreless. Tyree deep, drop back, will fire it near side pass. Caught wide open. That is Riley Porter, the second-year player. Uh, both with Sioux Falls, and he's got a first down on the 27, a pickup of 15. 
Yeah, they ran the, the play to the right side there. It was uh, They brought zone coverage down to the left, and it looks like they dropped everybody back to the right, and it just created an opening for Porter, and I'm curious to grab and gets out of bounds. Max Jackson makes yet another tackle for this Vegas defense. He's had a bit of a down year as the corners have really stepped up for this team. Thomas Rahman Jr., the rookie, and uh, Merrick Itera have been nothing short of sensational. We'll have more on them a little while or a little while later. First and 10 at the Fury 27. Tyree change in the play. Out of the gun. Back to pass. Tyree going down the middle. Pass is caught by Craig Hearn. A 14-yard First down to the 13, and Sue falls in the red zone for the first time. Yeah, and the quarterback trusts in his arm, stays true in the pocket, and just delivers an absolute dime over two defenders. Great throw. Great throw by Julian Tyree. Tyree spreading the ball around. He's now uh, four for four for 56 yards. Hearn has two catches for 26. Porter, one for 15. And Ray Lynn also with that one catch for 15 yards. Four receivers, back to pass Tyree. Going to throw it out to Hart for the first time tonight. And Hart is met by Rama Jr. Just past the line of scrimmage. Only a gain of one, maybe not even that, as Rama Jr. makes a great play. That's yeah, a great play by Rama Jr. The, the rookie's got one pick six on the area, 72 tackles, three tackles for a loss, and he's got 10 interceptions. Rahman Jr. been a beast that's tied for first in the SFL. Split backs now for Tyree. This Sioux Falls team runs a lot of different sets, a lot of heavy sets. They flip it out to the tight end. That's Miles Portis. Portis being shoved out of bounds, ushered really by Itera to the five. Third down and two coming up at the five-yard line, but the Sparrows sucking it, a blood-sucking drive here as we're already down to 4.15 to go in the first. Yeah, Merrick Itera is another one. He's a good tackler as well. He's got 101 tackles on the season for a corner. That is a new, a new SFL record. Press coverage up on the line against Sean Harrelson. Three in the backfield. Third down and two at the five. 403 to go offside. Meundy's laundry on the field. And Vegas not helping their cause there. That's going to move the chains for Sioux Falls. They may have done it on that run anyway, but Vegas having some trouble with the Sparrow offense as they have had in the past. So what do we got? Are we going to – we don't have the ruling just yet on whether this is going to be a first down or not. I believe it will. And – yes, first and goal at the two with under four to go. Chat shout-outs, Jay Ringgold, Lloyd Graham, Ashley Jackson, Jason 1347, multi-apples in there as well. Split backs for Tyree, trying to get the first points up on the board tonight. Tyree looking around. Everything's covered. He has to dump it off going backwards as the receiver lost four yards. He was right at the goal line. That may be trying to get a number. That's the tight end, J.J. McGee, who had a touchdown, staring it right in the face and turned the other way. Yeah, maybe just lost where he was on the field, and uh, momentum took him the wrong way there. Split backs again, and if you notice, Hart was covered there in the flats. Split backs for Tyree, back to pass again, goes over the middle, pass caught for a touchdown. Julian Tyree gets Sioux Falls on the board first, and one of the best tight ends to ever play in the SFL as Sioux Falls up 6-0. And a great opening drive by Sioux Falls. Uh, playoff atmosphere, their fans are loving it, going crazy. Uh, Move the ball down the field methodically. Uh, Tyree hit four or five different on that drive so he's spreading the ball out uh, moved the ball downfield looked really really strong for Sioux Falls he hit Craig Hearn Riley Porter uh, let's see Ray Lynn Miles Portis Colin Hart and J and uh, JJ McGee I believe that's six different receivers he went eight My of goodness. eight for 64 yards and one touchdown a textbook drive and Sioux Falls takes a 7-0 lead MeUndies are the world's most comfortable underwear. Visit MeUndies.com slash SimulationFL for 15% off your purchase, which will help support the SFL through our partnership. Give the gift of comfort with 100% satisfaction guarantee, free shipping and returns. Signature soft and stretchy MeUndies as Las Vegas will try to answer back after Sioux Falls goes on a picture-perfect drive to start the game. Hart just 11 yards on three carries. And Jackson 
gets rid of one, and then is dragged down to the 29-yard line by Killian Anderson. We'll get our second look at Thomas Rahman. Rahman, season high, 397 passing yards and six touchdowns against Indy at home, a QBR of 79.6 in his career. It's worth noting, Rahman in the last game against Tulsa crossed over the 5,000-yard threshold, so congrats to Rahman on that milestone. Hand off to Redford to start the drive, and he's tackled from behind, only a one-yard pickup. A nice play from behind there by number 98, Lennox Sanders. Yeah, and Sioux Falls defense, they are really, really good against the run. Again, they've only allowed 993 rushing yards this season. That's best in the SFL, and only allowed 12 rushing touchdowns all season. Three in the backfield, 2.45 to go in the first. Rahman going play action, and he'll fire it outside. The pass is tipped up and nearly, or could have been, intercepted. Jay Ringgold getting out there quickly, and now it's third and long. Yeah, Jay Ringgold's excellent in coverage. Uh, on the year, he's got 10 pass def uh, deflections, five interceptions, and he also has a pick six for uh, the Sparrows. Looking for blades there on the sideline, trying to... Tap those toes, 2.42 to go. This is some trouble here for Vegas. They are last in the league in passing offense, and they're gonna need a big play here out of Rahman. Blades, Funk, and company. Funk still uh, just with that one catch that was short of the first down. Empty backfield, five wide for Rahman out of the gun. Back to pass, down the middle. Pass is complete, but it's short of the first down. Alex Parker makes the stop as it was hauled in by Marion Corbetti, and Vegas gonna have to pump for the second consecutive drive. Yeah, Stu Falls kept the play in front of him. Uh, Vegas threw short, and uh, great job by the Sparrows to flock to the ball and, and stop the first down. McRack will try to boom this one deep. AJ, uh, AJ Levy back to return. And uh, I want to take a, a moment to wish AJ Levy's a father um, all the all the best. Um, he's had a hard week in the hospital this week, so uh, we're praying for AJ Levy and his family tonight as Levy. Uh, playing through pain tonight. Gets a uh, return out to the 29-yard line. I want to hit on some key notes for the year for Sioux Falls, if you don't mind, real quick. I just got three written down. Uh, they beat New Orleans, they beat QCC, and they've also beat Las Vegas. So they beat three pretty tough opponents on the year. And not a bad resume. Hart with just 11 yards here in the first quarter, but the Sparrows are up 7-0. He'll get his fourth handoff of the night here, and he'll run into a wall. Only a two-yard pickup as Vegas doing something pretty interesting is I think Atera came down for that tackle. They're sending guys off the right side and then using their linebackers to cover up that left side. Yeah, and it's a... It's an interesting stat here, you know, four carries for 13 yards of 3.3 yards per carry. Uh, it's half of his season average. Colin Hart's averaging 6.4 yards a carry on the year. 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. And back to pass as Tyree hit as he threw. Wobbly pass, but it's caught by Lynn on the outside. First down to the 40. Tyree is still perfect. Nine for nine. Yeah, and he just has the odd hand. It seems like everything that he throws is just right to the wide receiver, and it's an easy catch, uh, easy pitch and catch for the Sparrows as of right now. <clears throat> 103 to go in the first quarter. Sioux Falls in control at the moment. Going to flip it. Oh, man, Tyree took a lick after getting rid of that one. Colin Hart still in bounds, and they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 48-yard line. That's a gain of eight. There might need to be a Harry's challenge call on that one yeah the pressure was in Tyree's face immediately and he just checked it off right away to Hart who uh, picked up eight but if he had just kept his foot in bounds would have had more second down and two coming up nearing the end of the first quarter Vegas is trying to get out the field successfully for the first time eight in the box Hart's off to the right of Tyree. Hart going to get the carry on a trap, and Hart dragging two defensive linemen for Vegas past the sticks uh, to the Fury 49. Yeah, Hart for a quick guy, he's, he's really fast, but for a quick guy, he has a lot of power, and he can fight for those short yarded situations as well. It's one of the things I really like about him. He's versatile. First down and 10 at the 49-yard line. Might be the final play of the quarter as Tyree's going to let it go. Down the middle, they've been exposing the 
intermediate middle of the field here so far tonight. A.J. Warren makes the catch, and that is the, well, we're going to get a replay real quick first. Look at the hit that Anthony Wilde puts on him. That's the end of the first quarter. It's been all Sioux Falls so far. The Fury in need of a stop as we roll on into the second. This is Wild Card Thursday on the SFL Network on YouTube, presented by APM Music. Alongside Charles Doherty, Stephen Hacker, I am Cameron Irvine here. 7-0, Sioux Falls. They are back into Vegas territory as Tyree will drop to throw. Flip it outside to Hart, and Hart breaks a tackle. Hart gets seven to the Vegas 20, or to the Fury 29-yard line. Look at Tyree's numbers. He's a perfect 13 of 13. Yeah, 100% completion rating, and again, Colin Hart with the extra effort. Gets the ball out of the backfield, uh, out, out in the flats, and runs over one and drags two more. Vegas in pretty good position to get that stop, but Hart is too much of a beast. Hand off to Hart, breaks a tackle. Hart breaks a second and gets the first down to the 23-yard line. I think Max Jackson had the first crack at him and couldn't bring him down. Yeah, and he's definitely picking up momentum. He's, he looks like he's trying to find the sweet spot and, and get everything going. Colin Hart, fifth all-time in yards per carry, minimum of 100 attempts. He's got 3,584 rushing yards and 1,103 receiving yards in a very good career. This is Tyree passing it outside to the fullback and that'll only be a pickup of two. That is Ashley Anderson on the outside who also holds a, a record in the SFL for rushing touchdowns in a game with six. Tied with Redford. I liked, I liked what I saw there by the defense on the last play. Everybody swarmed, and they, they brought him down as a gang tackle. Second and eight from the 21. Flip out the Portis in the Ooh. pass way off the mark. Portis was open. It was like Tyree got a little bit too excited, and that will stall his completion uh, record at 13. Yeah, 13 straight completions, and you were wondering when that streak was going to stop. and. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't quite understand how he missed that throw. He made tougher throws, and then just the easy one, he, he just overshot him a little bit. Third down and eight. This would be a huge stop for Vegas' defense if they can get off the field. Dime 3-2 look for the Fury. Tyree out of the empty, back to pass. Just a three-man rush down the middle. Again, it's caught by Warren, and Warren's all the way down to the one-yard line. Tyree is carving up the Fury down the middle, and it's another first down, Sioux Falls. Yeah, and AJ Warren was just inches away from creeping in there, so they're gonna they're gonna be right there in good uh, Colin Hart territory uh, with the first down, three shots to get in the end zone. Vegas is definitely scrambling right now. Wyo came in and and uh, and missed the deflection there. What's interesting is Sioux Falls is running almost everything to the middle, trying to get the favorable matchups away from those corners. That's a touchdown for Colin Hart, and Sioux Falls has scored the first two uh, TDs of the game. Yeah, and Sioux Falls has just came right out of the gate, uh, executing their game plan perfectly. So uh, Vegas is going to have to make some adjustments on the fly here, even before half, uh, to try to not let Sioux Falls get away from them. If Vegas wins, Vegas would take on uh, Alaska in the quarterfinals. Sioux Falls, or I'm sorry, uh, Tallahassee would head, would head to Denver. If Sioux Falls wins, the Sparrows would go to Denver and Tallahassee would play Alaska in the quarterfinals. A rematch of the championship game. The latter is what we are headed towards. Still very early, but Sioux Falls has it all going on right now. It's 14 to nothing. The Simulation Football League is presented to you by APM Music, Production Music Library, and Custom Music House. By Extraordinary Everest, heartfelt messages on the most extraordinary place on earth. By Bit Central and Fuel, transforming SFL Media in 2019. And by Harry's, all you need for a close, comfortable shave. 9.17 to go in the first half. 
Vegas needs to pick things up. From the 10-yard line, this is Max Jackson. Jackson past the 30, and that's all he'll get up to the 31-yard line. And we'll see what Robert Redford and company have in stores. Uh, Steven, we were talking uh, in pregame in just going over this matchup that uh, Sioux Falls has the number one ranked rush defense and uh, that rush offense eighth for Las Vegas. Yeah, it was going to be an interesting matchup. You know, the linebackers for Sioux Falls versus Robert Redford is one that I was looking forward to. And off to Redford, and Redford not getting much inside. Only a pickup of one. Uh, plenty of sparrows in there on the stop. Redford just nine yards in the first half. And Cam, if you don't mind, I'd like to hit some of the Fury's key wins on the year. They, they have beat Sioux Falls this year. They beat Baltimore, and they also beat New Orleans. Yeah, that Baltimore win it featured those three block punts from Merrick Itera. That was one of the wildest games in league history. Raman going to throw on second down, going long, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and the pass is incomplete. What a tattoo put downfield by Greg Barnhart on Brett Funk. Yeah, Barnhart, the rookie, is, has had quite the year. It's 19 pass deflections with eight interceptions. So uh, if you're a quarterback and you want to test him, you might want to think twice, maybe look uh, look elsewhere, because this guy, can he can do a lot when the ball is in the air. Third down and nine at the 32, 8.39 to go in the first half. Raman again on a third and long will dump it short of the sticks. And Las Vegas playing scared right now as Funk only picks up three yards and they'll have to punt again. Yeah, again, Sioux Falls just, just dropping right. back in zone and keeping the, the short routes in front of them. And uh, Vegas is, is choosing to drop, uh, drop it down and, and Sioux Falls is just getting there and stopping any, any forward momentum from there. So it's a great job by the Sioux Falls defense uh, not allowing Las Vegas to really make any progress or gain any momentum. Here in the rain, the Sparrows have had the advantage and they have shown a, what a punt! All the way back to the 15 yard line. Levy made uh, made with it, or made up some ground up to the 23, but McRack absolutely crushed that football and flips the field. And Sioux Falls is gonna start uh, a little bit deeper in their zone, I think, than what they're used to. I mean, from the 23 yard line, uh, they got a little bit of work ahead of them. Maybe uh, Vegas can get a stop, keep them out of field goal range, and do a lot for their, their momentum. 7.57 to go in the first half. This is Tyree, play action pass, going down the middle again, wide open. This is a clinic up to the 35-yard line, and this time it's Terrain James. That's the eighth different receiver to catch a pass from Tyree tonight. Yeah, Tyree, you showing the love to everybody on the roster right now. Just oh. to you, are you a receiver? I'm going to get you the ball. Eight different receivers, 15 of 16, 135 yards, and a QBR of 122.7. I don't know how it's not perfect. Play action pass again from Tyree Short over the middle. Caught and dragging defenders for a first down to the 45-yard line. That is Benny Beasley. That is the ninth different receiver to catch a pass. How many more receivers do they have, Cam? I mean, <laughs> there possibly can't be another person to throw it to. Maybe get the backup running back in there and we'll make it 10. Yeah, Freddie Fox is the only uh, player, only eligible receiver, actually, that has not caught a pass tonight for Sioux Falls. This pass is caught on the outside by McGee, a six-yard pickup to the 49. Yeah, and Sioux Falls just looks like a well-oiled machine right now, just moving the ball at will. Whatever they want to do, they're doing Boy, Vegas would love a turnover here, despite the complete lopsidedness of this game. 40 yards for Vegas on offense, 174 for Sioux Falls. It's still just a two-score game, but Vegas has to get off the field. They're not going to do it doing that. Colin Hart Ooh. takes a big hit at the 40 from Anthony Wyo, but not before he picks up nine more yards on the ground for another Sparrow first down. And the daylight was there. Colin Hart explodes through the hole. Look at all the blockers. Gets through the hole, gets the first down, but Anthony Wyo just, that's the second time today he's laid an absolute thumper on somebody. Down to 6-10 to go in the first half. Hart with 16 yards on three catches, but they've gone away from him here a little bit in the wild card game. Play action, Tyree down the middle again. This time, 
It's Anderson with his second catch. And Warsaw makes the tackle for Vegas. They, they sniffed that out just a little bit better that time. Yeah, I think maybe some of the nerves have shook off for Vegas. You know, uh, Tyree's just throwing it all over the field every which way. And I think uh, Vegas is getting a little more attuned to what he's trying to do. Somebody help Oyasumi in the chat. And happy to have you here. And uh, hopefully I pronounced your username correctly. But having a lot of fun here on Wild Card Thursday. Hart gets a first down. Blows through Merrick Itera to the 29-yard line. And the chains and the clock just keep on moving. Boy, oh boy, Vegas in some serious trouble. They are 0-3 all time here in Sioux Falls. They did pick up their first win over the Sparrows earlier this season in their house. Tyree waits and fires inside the 15, now down to the 12. A 17-yard pickup by Terrain James. Yeah, Sioux Falls now again in the red zone. Imposing their will. You know, Vegas has got to do something here. Hold them to three or create a turnover uh, because down 21 going into halftime is not where you want to be. Steven, I got to ask you, have they thrown a single pass to a receiver outside the hash marks? I mean, everything has been inside. Yeah, it seems like the only pass that's going outside the hash marks is to Colin Hart. Three receivers, Vegas in a world of hurt right now as we come down near halftime. Two in the backfield, Tyree, three-step drop fires. Middle, oh man, that was almost intercepted as that is big number 94 coming in there. I don't even have a check that. That's Abner St. John, who's been very quiet tonight. The former Shark finally making a big play. Yeah, Abner St. John's very comfortable dropping back in pass coverage. He's got six pass deflections on the year, but he also can help stop the run with six tackles for a loss and 94 tackles on the season. That was just the second incompletion for Tyree on the day. Second and 10 at the 12, and the pass. Oh, look at Portis, one-handed. That one as he's falling backwards, picks up five. Again, Hart was covered in the flat, and Tyree able to find an unsung hero. Yeah, it was a good job by the receiver there. Jumped, made an acrobatic play, right. uh, but made sure his momentum kept him going forward and didn't lose yards on that play. Third down and five from the seven. Can Vegas' defense get off the field? 3.52 to go in a fast-moving first half. Tyree changing the play. Tyree oh, slips no. and falls, then throws it outside, and it's caught. And they play. rule it fourth and short, which uh, Sioux Falls may want to challenge. A.J. Warren makes the catch, but Tyree's showing off. Yeah, the footwork by the quarterback there. Uh, the, the rain's definitely playing a... Uh, factor in the field conditions and you saw it right there by Tyree but but uh great wherewithal to regain his footsteps and get the pass out for a completion didn't quite get the first down but just a great great overall play by Julian Tyree man I am shocked Sioux Falls did not challenge but they'll take the easy points and go up 17 to nothing here over Vegas in the first half and uh Las Vegas man they are in need of an answer here yeah, it's definitely a positive for Vegas that they held Sioux Falls to three there. Uh, down three touchdowns, like I said, going into half is not where you want to be. 17 points is still pretty tough to overcome, but it's manageable. Kick is away from Prefontaine. Jackson trying to ignite a spark here in the Fury, and he is roughed up, man. In I've never, I don't think I've ever said this in SFO history. Sioux Falls has won the game between the hash marks. I mean, Everything in the middle of the field, nothing going right for Vegas, everything going right for Sioux Falls. Yeah, and if, if you're the if you're the home team, Sioux Falls, you're just you're thrilled with the way your game plan has been working out for you today. Three receivers all to the right side for Ramen. Fury need to kick it in gear, hands it off to Redford, and Redford will fight ahead for six yards. And I think the perfect scenario for Vegas here to end the first half is to just take all this time off and get a touchdown. Don't let Tyree back out on the field. Yeah, they've had some short drives, you know, string together a couple of first downs here. Like you said, chew up some clock. I think that would do a lot of good for Vegas. Get two or three first downs, get down into scoring position and, and give your offense some momentum. Same formation here, handoff to Redford, same play even, and he got gets sandwiched 
there by Parker and Fargo. They've been my MVPs. They have not let Redford do anything. Yeah, Alex Parker, again, 75 tackles on the year, two tackles for a loss, but he really makes his money by dropping back into coverage with those 11 pass deflections. Crowd on their feet. Sioux Falls used to winning home playoff games. They've won at least won two years in a row. And Roman is going to be sacked from behind as he couldn't get the ball away. Yeah, the Sioux Falls defensive line pressure just uh, – Took a little bit of time to get there. Raman had time to throw, but they didn't give up and secures the sack for the Sioux Falls Sparrows. Black comes all the way around oh, no. from the other side. And that is the quip two minute warning. It has been all Sioux Falls. Vegas hanging around, hanging in there, but their offense barely has a pulse. They need to turn things around. Stay with us. This punt to the 22, Levy is wrapped up by Itera playing special teams. You know, we haven't gotten to talk really about Itera a lot tonight. They've gone uh, completely away from him, has Sioux Falls. Itera broke SFL records in tackles and block punts this season. He had seven this year, but Sioux Falls really hasn't punted all night. Seven block punts in a season. That's amazing. That's unheard of. Three in the Baltimore game. Hart breaks a tackle. Colin Hart breaks another one. Hart down the sideline. Hart, Colin Hart is going to go, and it's a touchdown. What a run from Hart, 74 yards. And listen to Sioux Falls. I mean, this place is absolutely erupted, and they have every reason to. Colin Hart with an absolutely phenomenal run. Gets to the outside and just leaves everybody in the dust. Oh, man. Right now, Vegas is just, I mean, they've got a tackling problem. They were in position to make a play two different times, could not bring Hart down. And unless Vegas shows something, I mean, pretty soon here, I mean, this put a fork in them. Yeah, with that, with that league worst passing attack, uh, that means your bread and butter's running the ball. and. Uh, running the ball doesn't really necessarily equate to scoring a lot of points, so Vegas is definitely going to ha have to come out firing and put up some points quick, or this is going to get out of hand. Extra point is good for Sioux Falls, 24 to nothing. This is just one week after Vegas set a franchise record for points scored in a uh, for points scored in a in a game. They had 52 against Tulsa, but the most points they've ever given up in franchise history, 48. That came against Sioux Falls just about six months ago. Fury in their second season, second playoff appearance, and they played Sioux Falls in both playoff games. Jackson is cracked in the ribs at the 30. And this could be the start of a, a pretty good rivalry here. You know, that that's exactly what, what it takes to, to create a rivalry is some bad blood, uh, a lot of matchups like that, key matchups, and you get in situations and, and you just develop a hatred for that other team. So this could be an interesting uh, matchup to watch in years to come. Raman and this offense needs to do something. Changing the play. Seven in the box, This the league's number one rushing defense has been that and more as advertised tonight. Redford gets eight yards, but Vegas needs to do something here. That's 23 yards on seven carries for Redford, and I don't know if they're just milking the clock or what. Yeah, maybe just trying to find what's working for him here. Uh, you know, your pass attack's not really working that great, so maybe just trying to see what running plays are working for you, see what the defense is going to present, and make your adjustments going into halftime, come out in the second half with a better game plan. Eight in the box for Sioux Falls. Play action for Raman. Flips it outside, pass caught by Blades. So Vegas stacking everybody in the box and then getting a nice pass out to John Blades for the first down and stops the clock too. 
Yeah, John Blades on the season with 60 receptions, 812 yards, and six touchdowns. Uh, both of their receivers share about the same stats. Uh, Brett Funk has 62 receptions on the year, 908 yards, and seven touchdowns. Liberty Park has been the nemesis of Las Vegas, trying to avoid falling to 0-4 in this stadium as Funk's pass, is, or Funk's reception rather, is ruled incomplete. Yeah, just ran out of sideline there. Uh, had to stretch out his arms to make it, and that momentum just, just couldn't keep his feet in bound. No Harry's close shape, right. close call challenge either as the drizzle continues to fall. 44 degrees, feels like 40. A chilly, ugly night, but the Sparrows fans are loving it right now. Two in the backfield, second and 10, 56 seconds to go. Great push, they bring the blitz, and Roman goes down. How did Roman not see that? A loss of seven yards as Sioux Falls brought everybody. Yeah, Sioux, uh, Sioux Falls showed the blitz right out the gate and uh, just couldn't do anything about the pressure. Yeah, he was there immediately. Tyrone Black again. That is his second sack, and it's third and 17. And the Fury take a timeout, which means that if they don't convert this third down, Sioux Falls could end up getting the ball back even before we reach the end of the first half. Third and 17 for Rahman. And Rahman in some trouble, gets rid of it down the field. One-on-one -on -one ball is incomplete as A.J. Levy knocks that one away from Brett Funk. Perfect coverage. And Vegas' offense has totaled 61 yards in 22 plays in the first half. And lackluster offense has come out, and it's, it's really put Vegas in the hole. Uh, come out and you can't convert any first downs, you can't move the ball, and it, it makes it really tough for, for your offense to do anything and, and keep up, especially when Sioux Falls is coming out firing on all cylinders. That punt nearly blocked. McRack gets it away. And from the 12, Levy on the return will only make it up to the 18. Kind of makes you wonder, Hacker, what would have happened? Uh, what would have happened last week if London and Chicago would have won and made the playoffs? How would they have done tonight against Sioux Falls and Tallahassee, who have looked awesome? Boy, that was some heavy lightning there in the distance. That's not good. Yeah. Don't don't need a delay here. Yeah, it whited out my screen there. This is a huge <laughs> lightning strike. I couldn't see anything here in the booth down on the field. But... We play on. Portis picks up nine. The forecast was just drizzle, but it's picking up here as we're nearing halftime. Sioux Falls just continues to run their offense. 22 of 24, 192 yards and running out the clock. Three in the backfield. This may be the final play of the first half. Hand off to Hart. That spells trouble. Hart in the open field. Wyo makes the tackle, but Sioux Falls is going to call a timeout. Because now they're in Hail Mary range, but Wyo saved the touchdown. Yeah, and I think the, the fans here in Sioux Falls, they, they held their breath in anticipation whenever they saw Hart only had one man to beat. So a great job by Wyo to, to, to tackle Hart and prevent a touchdown. The final play of the first half coming up here. Sioux Falls has really just obliterated Vegas here. They have 330 total yards of offense in the first half. Tyree gonna sling one up for a Hail Mary, but he's, oh, he got away from it. Oh, and then he's hit from behind. Fats Johnson clocks someone. And that's the end of a miserable first half for Las Vegas. They will need to regroup. Coming out of the locker room, they're in some trouble. 24-0, Sioux Falls leads at the half. Steven Hacker, I mean, I don't even know what to say. How does Vegas come back in this game? You know, in our pregame, we were talking about, you know, I'd like to see a heavy dose of Robert Redford, you know, get him going, but down 24, I think it's going to rely heavily on the arm of, of Raman, Thomas Raman. He's going to have to come out and, and guide his offense and steer him in the right direction and put some points on the board for Vegas. That throw to John Blades was one of only, uh, I think, one or two plays over 10 yards. Raman, 6 of 11 for 38 yards in that first half. 
Julian Tyree hit so many receivers. I think some from Vegas' bench caught a pass from him. He was very, very efficient. One of the most efe efficient first halves of any quarterback in league history. Yeah, again, Ty you know, Tyree's just showing his uh, efficiency. Um, quietly has had a really good year, kind of flew under the radar as far as quarterbacks go. But, you know, again, a 73% completion rating, 20, 2,900 yards. You know, the guy can move the ball around when it's needed. But, you know, again, they're going to rely on the legs of Colin Hart all day long. Hart with 132 yards on 11 carries. He was held in check in that first quarter. Redford, a measly 23 yards after he nearly broke the single game rushing record last week. This Sioux Falls defense, very underrated. And whether, uh, whether uh, well, if Sioux Falls wins, they would take on Denver. And if I'm the Nightwings, I would feel a little nervous after watching the Sparrows here tonight. Yeah, you know, Denver with the running back, Jared McChesney, they like to run the ball as well. And so, you know, Sioux Falls is showing that they definitely know how to stop the run. Start of the second half. I believe Sioux Falls gets the ball to start the second half too, which uh, doesn't help matters for Vegas. But we'll see what type of halftime adjustments the Fury had. And we got a whole other half of football to play. Don't go anywhere. You never know what can happen in an SFL game. Six yards deep, and uh, going to bring it out is A.J. Levy. Only gets to the 21. Steven at large asks in the chat, Cam, you ever skip a meeting for a massage like Mike McCarthy? Only with your mom, Steven. Only with oh. your mom. That's that's playoff talk right there, Cam. I love it. He, he laid that one over the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to see Mullenix in the chat. He's preparing for his game. Uh, Sunday against Mexico City. Those uh, playoff times, all quarterfinal games on Sunday, those playoff times will be uh, determined after tonight's broadcast. Look at that. Julian Tyree tried to hit the eligible tackle, Tim Freeman, but he dropped it. Yeah, I think Tyree is trying to hit 10 or 11 receivers tonight. and It's, it's interesting that the Sioux Falls offense is allowing him to throw to as many receivers as he possibly can. So second down at the 21-yard line. Tyree is up to or down to 84.6% completion percentage. Second down and 10. The handoff goes to Hart running right. Got a block and then a whiff. Just a terrible angle on the tackle for Hart. And Hart is gone. Oh, man. Who was that? That was horrendous tackling or, or pursuit, I should say. And the man, Colin Hart, just coming out delivering for his uh, home home field. So it's it's a great thing to see for Sioux Falls. And, you know, if you're Vegas, it, it's a big uphill battle now. Man, I still couldn't see the number. Thank goodness on that player. That was one of the worst angles. He, I guess he thought Colin Hart was going to bounce it inside. And uh, <laughs> Stephen saying that his mother is watching if she actually is watching i very much apologize mrs mullinex um i was just uh having some fun but uh <laughs> it's all in good fun here at the sfl it really is not for vegas though colin hart now has 213 yards on 12 carries this is miserable and somebody get matt wilson on the phone we might have to have another rubber ducky contest uh, and actually, Nathan Blake uh, got his rubber ducky from the previous uh, contest, ran in a blowout. And I believe they're calling him Captain Quackers. So we're going to, we, we may have to explore that because this is not looking good for Vegas at all. Cam, while we got a little break here, I just wanted to say thanks to Charles Doherty, who's doing live stats for us today. Uh, we appreciate you stepping up and helping us, uh, helping us out with our broadcast today. Yeah, he's been awesome, and he he even did the first game too. So Doherty's been all over it. Um, it's actually done. It's actually live statted more games um, than anybody else this season, outside of uh, Nathan Blake and Mark Lopez, who uh, run that department. So huge shout-outs to to uh, Charles here tonight. 
First down and 10 at the 26. This has gone from bad to worse for Las Vegas. Handoff to Robert Redford. Redford discards a sparrow, and he's off to the races. 50, 40, and is finally slowed down and wrapped up by Ringgold. Out to the Sparrow 33-yard line, and finally signs of life from Las Vegas. Yeah, and Robert Redford just lowers his shoulder and says, jump on, guys. I'm going to carry the load from here. That was A.J. Levy that took the brunt of that hit, and that was much needed out of uh, Las Vegas. They have really struggled tonight to move the football, and now they got to get Thomas Rahman going. 39 passing yards. He has not taken a lot of chances down the field, and the two that he has have been knocked away. First down at the Sparrow 33-yard line. Rahman going to throw. And Rahman looking long, and the pass is incomplete. Tried to fit that into a very tight window to John Blades and Ringgold there again to make the stop. Yeah, press coverage on the outside. Ringgold was just dropping back in uh, uh, cover two help. Great job by the safety to get over there and help uh, help his corner out. Yeah, also in coverage out there was Barnhart, who was a little late, may have gotten beat, but Ringgold had his back. Second and 10, and Rahman's now 6 of 12. Second and 10 from Cliff Gary, 32 yards. Three receivers off to the short right side. The line shifts left for Sioux Falls. They've got eight on the line of scrimmage. Rahman going to throw quickly out to Redford. Got all kinds of room. Robert Redford picks up eight to make it a more third, uh, a, a more manageable third down. Fargo and Ringgold again there on the tackle. Yeah, that's not something you expect a lot out of Robert Redford. It's only 36 receptions on the season. Again, compared to Colin Hart's 109 receptions, but a good gain on that play. Maybe they should uh, call that one up again. Yeah, if I would have told you that Colin Hart had just three catches for 16 yards and Sioux Falls led 31-0, to zero, you'd probably fall out of your chair. Usually Hart much more active in the game plan, but 15 touches here tonight compared to 26 for Tyree. Uh, has been a remarkable change of pace. Third down and two at the 24. Rahman trying to keep the drive alive. We'll hand it off to Redford on a stretch play. Running left. Redford gets through. 10-5 down to the four as they seal the side or the left side for Redford to pick up plenty. Yeah, great offensive formation there for the for the Fury. Uh, stacked out two, two receivers to the right, and the defense shifted over to it. And then just a run to the left uh, gave nothing but room for Redford on the outside and a great touchdown saving play by A.J. Levy. Levy on the tackle, nine minutes to go in the third. And Las Vegas has wasted no time responding to that long touchdown from Colin Hart. Hand off to Redford, got the blocks. Oh, look at all the water fly off those two players as Ringgold again makes a tackle, only a two yard gain. Yeah, that was a slow motion like a boxing hit when the spit and the mouth guard comes flying out of the boxer's mouth. So just an absolute monster hit by Jay Ringgold. Eight and a half, third quarter, all Sioux Falls. This is definitely the closest Vegas has been to scoring here. Two in the backfield for Rahman. Rahman going to hand it off to Redford. Redford has to adjust to the right side, and A.J. Levy flexes and says, you got me once, but you're not going to get me this time, and now it's third and goal. And A.J. Levy with 79 tackles on the season, five tackles for a loss. He had 12 pass defenses and uh, five interceptions. Third down and goal from the three, 7.58 to go, third quarter. Three receivers, will Rahman throw here? They're going to try Redford one more time. He is going to throw, and Rahman fires back in the end zone. It's intercepted. Jay Ringgold off the deflection, and Sioux Falls still pitching a shutout. And not what you needed to have happen if you're the Fury. Uh, you wanted to put some points on there. I like the aggressiveness, but just great coverage by Sioux Falls defense. Tip drill secured by Jay Ringgold, and Sioux Falls ball now on the 20. Ringgold is balling, and that is a knife into the leg for the Las Vegas Fury. They had... For the first time tonight, some momentum, getting the ball all the way down the field, and they couldn't punch it in inside the five. As Tyree and company back out there. Tyree goes to work, and that pass is incomplete. That is knocked away by Rahman Jr. That's the first time they've gone outside the hash marks all night, 
And here's a look at Rahman Jr.'s stats. Tied for first this season in interceptions. And third with 72 total tackles. That's third mo uh, most amongst corners. And again, the big pick six that he had as well. Uh, this is a good pickup by the Fury. A good rookie to have on their roster. And he's got that last name, the trademark that Vegas seems to like. Pass caught wide open over the middle. That's Riley Porter. Pitch and catch. Tyree now 23 of 28 for 210 yards. Yeah, and Sioux Falls can really just slow down here, control the clock. Uh, they pretty much got this thing in the bag pending any huge collapse. Just, just maintain possession of the ball, get a couple of first downs, and just grind this game out, and, and they're on to the next round. And boy, wouldn't it be uh, epic collapse at this point, up 31. Tallahassee won the first game of Wildcard Wednesday by 31 as the blowouts seem to follow Wildcard Wednesday wherever it goes. That pass should have been intercepted by St. John, but he couldn't get a hand on it. First drop pass of any Sparrow receiver tonight outside of that tackle, Freeman, who it's hard to hold that against him. Seven thirteen to go in the third quarter. Three receivers, two off the left side for Tyree out of the gun. Nickel look for Vegas. Tyree to throw, again throws, slants, that pass is tipped away by Abner St. John. That's his third opportunity for a pick, and he has been the one thing standing between Tyree and a perfect QBR tonight. Yeah, Abner St. John using his, uh, his field awareness to get in, in good pass coverage, and like you said, three pass deflections on the day. Really the best thing that the, the Vegas uh, Fury have in coverage right now. Third and 10 at the 33, 7-11 to go in the third. Vegas looking for any sign of a spark after Rahman threw a pick in the end zone. Tyree going long, passes incomplete. Not intercepted by Jackson, but Jackson will end up going back there to return the punt. And for the first time tonight, the Fury can say they got off the field. That was a great stand. Uh, maybe, maybe a half too late. You got two quarters behind you, but... A stand there is good. Max Jackson on the season with 117 tackles, four tackles for a loss, six pass deflections, and seven interceptions. I don't have his return yardage numbers, but uh, he does double duty for the Las Vegas Fury. Yeah, still a really good player uh, at safety, despite not getting all the accolades on special teams as much as he has in the past. As Jackson breaks a tackle, and he runs uh, east and west, not north and south, and gets it out to the 32. So... Rahman has a chance to redeem himself, but Vegas certainly could have used points on that last drive, any sort of points. Yeah, that was a gut-wrenching turnover that they committed in the end zone. I mean, right. uh, you were right there knocking on the doorstep and just a tip deflection, and, and it goes the other way, and you walked away with zero points. I know that hurt, but you showed that you can move the ball downfield, and let's just do it again. 6.55 to go in the third. Three in the backfield. Rahman play fake. Rahman looking, and this time fires over to the far side of the field. That pass hauled in by the tight end, number 86, Randy uh, Palfo. And Vegas has ran that play action call a couple of times, and it's, it's worked pretty good for them. Uh, when they do go to it, they seem to get positive yards. Yeah, been a nice change of pace. Second and two, handoff Redford right up the middle, first down and more. Robert Redford out to the Fury 48-yard line, and once again, Vegas moving the ball a lot better than they did in the first half, but they got to come away with some points. Yeah, you need you need points, and, and you need to keep some some ticks on the clock. So uh, I like that you're getting Redford involved. I like that he's he's continuing to pound it out, but you definitely need, you need some big chunk plays here. Uh, maybe get some things going through the air as well, maybe uh, shorter than five yards, or longer than five yards, I apologize. They're going to outscore Vegas, or Sioux Falls, by ten here in the next six minutes. Try to get this to a three-score game before the end of the third, and Redford is one-on-one -on -one hit in the backfield. Perfect defense there by another McGee. That's Tyrone McGee on the outside. And Redford's got a pretty healthy yards per carry right now. Sitting somewhere around seven, seven yards of carry. So he, he's he's doing work when he gets the ball. Back to pass. Rahman got to get rid of it. Dumped off to Redford. Redford got a head full of steam. And Robert Redford 
near a first down. Ringgold, another tackle. Jay Ringgold's been ridiculous tonight. Four tackles, two passes defended, and a pick. And he's made a bunch of statement plays for the Sparrows. I mean, just coming up, filling the gaps, uh, leveling leveling uh, the offense, and, and, of course, the turnover always helps, too. Made a couple of good plays and pass deflections. He's been all over the field tonight. Third down and one. Really need a stop, or really need a first down, rather, for Vegas here. The handoff goes to Redford, and Redford got some blocks. Didn't get much after that. Did pick up the first down. Ringled again. This guy's unbelievable. It's the best I've seen Ringo play all season. And in the big moments, you know, somebody's got to step up and provide. So I, I think tonight that Jay Ringgold is that guy on the defense for the Sparrow. First down and 10 at the 41. You heard it here first, Sunday, 8 p.m. Central. Me and Ramos Lynn will be calling as uh, Raman is going to be sacked on this play. Me and Ramos will be calling the Baltimore-New Orleans game, the 4-5 matchup. That will end our quadruple header on Sunday. Uh, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, New Orleans, the number five seed at Baltimore, the number four seed. The kickoff times for the rest of the games will depend on who wins this game. If everything holds as it stands right now, Sioux Falls and Denver will be at two, Mexico City and Dallas will be at four, and Tallahassee, Alaska will be at six Central as Redford picks up uh, nine and will bring up a third and eight. Yeah, and Redford gets over the century mark with that carry. Uh, dropped his yards per carry down a little bit, but 6.3, 6.9 is nothing to balk at. So still a productive day for him, but, you know, they just got to get the ball moving in the air. Third and long for Vegas. They're wasting precious time. Empty backfield, five receivers, and six in the box for Sioux Falls. Raman throwing an out route, and again, it'll be short of the sticks. Boy, that, is, that has been an Achilles heel tonight as well. Funk not running routes anywhere near the first down. And this drive's going to stall out, too, although they may be able to get a Matt Rage field goal here in this crummy weather. Yeah, Matt Rage on the season has a uh, hit 19 of 20, so 95%. This would be a little bit of test of his leg, but it's within range. Uh, the rain doesn't help. I'm not sure what the wind is right now, but this this should be uh, manageable for Matt, Matt Rage. It's a 52-yarder for Rage to finally get Las Vegas on the board and end the shutout, and that field goal is good. Man, he had plenty of leg on that in the inclement weather. Gets it back to a four-score game. Vegas still needs to prove they can score a touchdown, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah, points on the board gives your offense some momentum. Uh, when you look up at the scoreboard, you don't see a goose egg anymore. They, they, get, they just... It helps a little bit. When you see that zero up there, it really, really deflates you. So uh, positive momentum. Come out and get a defensive stop, and, and you can you can put this thing uh, where you need it to be. And think, if they would have scored that mm -hmm. touchdown, it would be a three-score game right now with plenty of time left. Levy on the return, and he'll just get past the 20. Vegas has been good in the uh, kick coverage game tonight. But... Back down to a four-score game, and Vegas needs their defense to step up one more time. Here's a look at Max Jackson. Out there getting wet. 3.20 to go. All Sparrows. 209 yards on 23 completions for Tyree. Going to throw some slants again. Down the middle of the field. Caught. First down to the 35. Killing him with slants, a pick of a 13. Yeah, and A.J. Warren just runs a good route. Well-thrown ball by Tyree. Just a good timing route there. Ready for the zone to open up and deliver the strike. Got it right past uh, Warsaw, playing that inside linebacker spot. He is really struggling with receivers crossing into his zone. Split backs for Tyree. First and 10 at the 35, Hart still with just three catches tonight. He'll fire it out to Portis, Will Tyree, and that picks up eight. This is the this is the remarkable thing, Stephen, and one of, I think, the, the best coaching jobs I've seen all season long. Vegas has taken Colin Hart out of the passing game, and Miles Portis, a tight end that most haven't heard of, is getting all the receptions 
thanks to that defensive effort. 2.27 to go in the third. This time they get it out to Hart. And Hart going to get a first down. And Max Jackson threw him down with a face mask, or at least attempted to. Me undies laundry on the field. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of a reaction there from Jackson. I think his hand got mixed up in there, and he tried to pull his hand out immediately, but the ref caught it. And it's not an incidental. It's a personal foul face mask. Ooh. Tacked 15 yards onto that, and a terrible mistake by Max Jackson. We'll see it again here. Definitely grabbed him one. Oh, yeah. Yep. See that head turn 180 yep. degrees, basically. Yeah, almost, almost a horse collar and, and just grab the mask. Sioux Falls now in scoring range. Tyree and Hart have no turnovers tonight. Hart's had just 12 carries on the ground. Two minutes to go in the third. Tyree back to pass, and he's in trouble. All the way back across his body, and Anderson dropped it. I don't know how Tyree is getting rid of some of these passes, and he's lucky that didn't turn into a pick six. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous throw. Uh, definitely not what Tyree has been putting out there today. I mean, he took a little bit of a risk there, throwing across the field, across his ball, across the momentum. It was just an awkward throw, and yeah, definitely lucky that wasn't a turnover. Trips off the left side, second down. Tyree now 25 of 34 passing. Play action pass. Tyree hit as he threw. Pass is caught. A.J. Warren, a nine-yard gain. Tyree putting it on him. Look at Portis. Five catches, 36 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, who would have thought that Portis would have been the guy you had to look out for? You know, Vegas did a good job game planning to take the flats away from Colin Hart, but there's just another layer to that play, and Portis is just feasting because of it. Third and short, three in the backfield. Sure Hart's getting something out of this play. Hand off, running left, and Colin Hart's got a first down and more. Picked up a great block. Hart breaking another attempted Y.O. tackle out to the 12-yard line. Another Sparrow first down as they continue to chew clock. Yeah, third and manageable. You know they're going to get Colin Hart involved in some way, shape, or form. They elect to hand it off to him there, and he gets the first down and more, uh, just continuing to show his dominance here today. My, oh, my. One minute to go in the third quarter, and Sioux Falls has looked very impressive. I mean, they've looked like championship contenders here, but as far as I'm concerned, as Hart drags the defender down to the six-yard line. Yeah, I really like what Sioux Falls does um, as far as running the ball and, then, and how they get Hart involved in the passing game. I, uh, I, Me personally, I felt like they're maybe a little bit of a dark horse. And I don't feel like enough people are talking about Sioux Falls going into the playoffs. You know, obviously everybody's favoring Alaska and uh, Dallas, but uh, right now uh, Sioux Falls is looking really, really good. Back to pass, wide open Portis, and did he get in? No, ruled out at the goal line. Portis nearly had his second touchdown of the night as he's been wide open off that line. Yeah, again, I think Hart going out in the flats, you know, everybody knows that they'd like to dump it down to Hart, especially down here in the red zone, get him a, a little flat route and get him into the end zone, so it's uh, Vegas is focusing on that and it's just leaving Portis wide open. Yeah, putting the league on notice that if you want to take Colin Hart away, this might be what happens. Oh, that in. pass could have been taken all the way back. I don't know how I, Tara, doesn't pick that off. It was right in front of his face. Yeah, and Sioux Falls ran the exact same play and the defense was ready for it and just, uh, I, Tara just couldn't come away with the turnover. Very, very unfortunate for Las Vegas. That is at least the fourth, maybe fifth, dropped interception or potential interception of the night for Las Vegas. They've got a goal line look, Tyree back to pass, everybody's covered, and they over-pursue the route, and Hart scores a touchdown. They had Hart covered, and then again, a terrible play on the outside allows Hart to walk in the end zone. And that one hurts. Uh, that one definitely hurts. Scoreboard's just getting away from you, and it's, uh, you had your corner in the right position, just overplayed it. I mean, the, the game plan was there, just, just improper execution. And that's how the third quarter is going to end, and now all hope is essentially lost for Vegas on a comeback. 
And they had a chance, Steven. They had a chance that Itera runs that back for a pick six. It is a three possession ball game heading into the fourth quarter. Instead, a 14 point swing and a 35 point game. We've reached the end of the third. There's no end in sight. Sioux Falls is packing their bags to Denver as we speak. Yeah, I said it before the game, you know, one of the things that I was watching was the takeaways. Sioux Falls had to control the ball and, and, and limit their turnovers, and they've done exactly that. Vegas came in against plus seven in takeaways, and right now they're down negative one. So uh, not necessarily working out how they're used to it, but, you know, you made the playoffs, you got to keep your head up. And like I said, this game is pretty far out of reach, but you can uh, you can make it a respectable game, come out and, and work on some things for next year, figure out what's working for you here in this high pressure, this high uh, high intensity game and, and build off of that and go into next season even stronger. You've made you've made the playoffs both seasons of your franchise, so you're doing things right, uh, just a little bit finer tuning on your game plan and, and, and you're right back in this thing. Unfortunately, Sioux Falls has shut the door on Vegas in both of those seasons as Redford picks up a couple of blocks and picks up seven on the outside. Yeah, A.J. Levy gets in there, uh, stops the Redford, and it's been a good showing for the, for the Sioux Falls secondary today. Second down three, Raman just 78 passing yards. Vegas will definitely need to work on their pass offense this offseason. It's, it's it's remarkable they made the playoffs with the worst pass defense in the SFL, as, or pass offense rather, as that pass is caught by Blades. And look at it, Sioux Falls. They got no championships, but they're 56-35. This is their seventh season in the SFL. They're going to improve to 3-5 and five at home in the playoffs, and this will be the third consecutive season They've won a first-round home playoff game. It's just been that second round that's been their bugaboo. They're going to have a chance to conquer those demons against Denver on Sunday. Yeah, and that should be a really interesting game. Again, the number one def uh, rush defense going against a team that likes to run the ball a lot. So that should be an interesting one as well. Outside to Redford, very well defended. Only one yard on the pickup. Uh, but the clock will keep ticking. Now under 10 to go. Man, not much more you can say about, and actually it's 76 yards officially, about this ball game. This has been shocking. Vegas beat Sioux Falls earlier this season. They did lose here at Liberty Park in the rematch, uh, but in, in neither of those games did we see a blowout like this, and Sioux Falls just came to play tonight. There is no quite, they, they've had... They have one of the most unique offenses in the league, and it, it has to scare any opponent. Yeah, and they're showing they're showing the layers to their offense. You know, again, Vegas had some good strategy to shut down Colin Hart in the passing game, but it was just that that second and third read for Super Bowl been there all night. Long. Whoa, my goodness! Nice catch there by Funk in traffic, and I I uh, understand your ex your s shock, Stephen, because I didn't I didn't expect that pass to be caught. Nice job by Funk on press coverage. Raman squeezes it in there over John Barnhart and in between uh, Barnhart and Levy. And would have been nice to see that a little bit earlier. But, you know, again, you got to keep taking your shots. Uh, you know, you want to put points right. on the board. You don't want to leave the game in the current state that it's in. So uh, you're playing for a little bit of pride here. And, and they're definitely not giving up. They're taking the shots. You know, they want this win. Uh, it's a little bit out of reach for them. But I like to see the effort. Redford's had a nice night, but unfortunately it hasn't meant much as Redford picks up two on that pass. Does stop the clock of the outside. McGee on the tackle, second and eight. Damn, this was an this was an interesting season. You know, coming into the uh, into the playoff picture the last three or four weeks, uh, you know anybody could get in. I know some teams are dissatisfied that they're not in right now, but. You know, some teams do what they need to do, and it's just the way that the cookie crumbles. And they, you know, Vegas got their shot to get in here, and got some me undies laundry on the field there, Cam. I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah, 
I'll let you finish, Cam. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. With let me let me finish. I didn't even start. There's. <laughs> I know. I, I got I, the flag came out, and then it lost my train of thought. I was wanting to make a good point, and then what do you know? I lost my train of thought. So. <laughs> it's all good, brother. That's uh, an offside on Sioux Falls. That pass nearly caught, but again, uh, defended well down the field uh, inside the 10-yard uh, line. Chat shout-outs, Blake Hamrick, uh, Nathan Spratt, Warhammer62, Sultan LSCG, Drew Rilly, uh, right. Eric's in the chat, Tyrone Jones, Andrew Francis, Ashley Jackson, Gerald Smith, Jason1347, Colin Hart, Harish Prasad, Thomas Rahman Jr., uh, lots of... Friendly faces in the chat room here tonight, and unfortunately, uh, we just couldn't get a better game out of Vegas and Sioux Falls. Queen City and Tallahassee ended up a blowout in the first game, but that game was close through the first two and a half quarters. Yeah, that game earlier between QCC and Tallahassee looked, looked like it was going to be a barn burner, uh, but QCC kind of fizzled out, and Tallahassee just kept on rolling. Back to pass, Rahman looking around and just got it to Blades. First down of the 13, that pass was nearly too late, nearly picked, but Rahman connects again. Seven forty-eight to go in the fourth. Rahman now 16 of 20, 325 yards. Again, thanks to Charles Doherty, who's been pulling double duty tonight. Uh, doing live stats for both games. If you want to join the live stats team, please, they need all the help they can get. Nathan Blake and Mark Lopez, reach out to them. Uh, we've got about eight guys that have done an awesome job all season long, uh, but we'll need more as we head into the summer season in July. An absolute monster day for Colin Hart there. He saw his stats and his touchdowns. Just man came to, to deliver here for Sioux Falls today. 7-10 to go in the fourth. This is Rahman looking around. Fires over the middle. Pass complete. And that caught by Simon Templar to get the Fury down to the Sparrow 7. But they've already thrown one pick here in the red zone. See what they do here on third and four. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe a little bit more room uh, being on the seven yard line. Maybe that same play to the back of the end zone might actually work out. They'll have a little bit more uh, more gap, more field to play with. That's a great point, and that's a great touchdown. Touchdown for the Fury. They don't quit, and they get their first points up on the board tonight uh, in terms of touchdowns. 38-9, and the pass caught by Palfo. And a good job on the slant by Palfo. Rahman recognized it immediately that he didn't even have anybody over there and just quickly gets it out of his hands and into the end zone. Never say never, right, Steven? <laughs> I, mean... I wasn't one to say never during the QCC game, so uh, I love the mentality. Again, I, I just never quit, never surrender. You always fight until the clock stops because you never know what can happen. 6.35 left in the fourth, and they're talking about the passing game in the rain and, and if it hinders, if it's hindered Vegas tonight. Dwayne Schindler says it hasn't hindered Sioux Falls' passing attack, but what's interesting about that point is that Sioux Falls' passing attack is not a deep passing attack. I think they've attempted one pass over 15 yards tonight. They've been throwing short, and uh, one way to not allow the rain to affect your, your throws is to throw between five and ten yards almost every time. That pass, or that uh, kick is away from one yard deep in the end zone. A.J. Levy on the return. And Levy's still going! How did he get out of that? He's going to get away and A.J. Levy's going to score! One of the fa most fantastic kickoff returns I've ever seen. Touchdown Sioux Falls. And that's how they answer Vegas' score. Yeah, and he just disappeared in the in the, wow. in the throw of bodies and just came out shooting like a rocket. And then with only the kicker to beat, you knew he was going to take it all the way. And it was just unbelievable. Yeah, look at all those bodies there. And he just somehow squeezes through. And then bye-bye, kicker. Matt Rage, you're not going to catch me. That has been the night for Las Vegas. They finally get a touchdown. And that happens. Yeah, immediately takes the air out of out of the out of the chamber and just you know you're feeling good. Okay, man, we got we got ten. You know we can you know, twenty five is not what you want to lose by, but we can you know close the mar margin, make it a respectable game. And then Sioux Falls just comes out and 
absolutely lays it on you. That is A.J. Levy's first touchdown as a returner. He had 27 total returns, punts and kicks coming into the game. And he gets his first one just when Vegas started to get some momentum. And how about, but boy, they don't call him a leader for nothing. And A.J. Levy, he's on the, on the brink of that Hall of Fame career. And uh, what a time to get your first ever career return. Yeah, it's a great job by your leader to demonstrate to your team, you know, hey, we're going to step on their throats here. We don't want to allow them back in this game. You know, you got to set the tone for the guys that look up to you. So a great job by, by A.J. Lee. <clears throat> From the 10, Jackson on the return, and he is flattened at the 30-yard line. Oof. And Vegas' offense has got to be thinking, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, and I actually thought going into the game that Max Jackson was the one on special teams that we were going to have to keep an eye on, and and uh, A.J. Lee uh, flipped the script on me real quick. Yeah, Max Jackson, it's pretty pretty unbelievable that Jackson this season has had the struggles that he's had when just a couple seasons ago he was ridiculous on special teams. Uh, Jackson this week or this season, no return touchdowns in 93 combined punt and kickoff returns. That's wow. uh, that's shocking. Definitely not what you expect from Max Jackson. You know, they, again, the guy's made a name for himself uh, in the secondary, but also returning kicks and punts. So for you to say that, I, I was a little surprised. And Levy, my apologies. I, I didn't realize that you had returned kicks and punts before in your career. This is the first of his season. That pass is caught down the field by Chris Knight for the first down for Vegas. By the Let's way, take a look at Raman. Sorry, go ahead, Cam. I was just going to say, by the way, Gabriel Manning leads the league this season with four return touchdowns. Yeah, I really like I really like watching San Francisco play and Gabriel Manning. You know, like I said, I I love the special teams threat. I love what that what that layer of, of the game can do for you. If the Sharks can keep their nucleus together, they bothered Alaska, Mexico City, and um, and. Tallahassee down the stretch even beat the Pride on the road, finished five and seven. If they can keep that nucleus together uh, and find themselves a high-quality quarterback, um, San Francisco could be your surprise playoff team next year. Yeah, they got a, a, a couple of good wide receivers. Uh, they got a trusty running back. So yeah, you know, they're a couple of pieces away. You know, just build off build off your game plans. And you know, San Francisco's they definitely can provide some excitement. Well, they're just handing it off to Redford now, just trying to get on the plane home. First and 10 to the 39. Another handoff to Redford. He's up to about 115 right now. First and 10 at the 39. Raman going to throw, and Raman finds a diving blades to make the catch for six over the middle. Good work by Raman here getting, getting his offense going. Raman, pass nearly intercepted. John Barnhart all over it. Deflects it away, third and four. Yeah, and Cam, I think, you, I think you nailed it on the head when you said, you know, those five to ten yard routes will work really good in the rain. And there you see it, a, a, a 15 yard route right into the hands of the defenders. So a uh, couple of the check downs they ran, the slants and the crossing routes, those things have been working for them. So uh, maybe look, look for some intermediate and short routes. 4.27 to go in the fourth. Empty for Raman here. This has typically been an out route tonight that's fallen short of the sticks, but they only need four yards. This time they're going down the middle, and that pass is too far out in front of Marion Corbetti, and it falls incomplete. Bad throw there. Yeah, just, just got away from him. Couldn't quite complete the pass, and see if, if they're going to come out and try to get six and get right. the first down, if they're going to bring out... Matt Rage. Yeah, they're going to go for it. Why not? Down 35 here. 424 to go in the fourth quarter. This certainly has not turned out like Vegas would have hoped for the second consecutive season. Their season is going to end in Sioux Falls. And as you said, a rivalry brewing as Las Vegas is probably sick and tired of seeing the Sparrows. That pass is a turnover on downs as Bobby Carpenter, the slot corner, simply swats that down. 
And I do feel like this is a, is a pretty good rivalry game. I mean, the the story is there for them. You know, again, like you're saying, Vegas is uh, every time they play Sioux Falls in the playoffs, they can't seem to get past them. So, I mean, that's a great storyline that's building up for these two franchises. Uh, something for them to look forward to uh, come next season, a, a game that maybe they're looking out for, a, a revenge game, so to speak. What's really interesting is Sioux Falls and their opponents in the playoffs and just kind of the bizarre way that things have fallen for, for the Sparrows. We'll get to that in a minute. This is a handoff to Freddie Fox. Hey, Freddie Fox has a chance to get a catch here, Stephen, and, and he will. Tyree will have completed passes to all 10 eligible, <laughs> eligible players. Yeah, and if we could have just got that completion to the tackle, we might have had 11. That's right. That's 11 a, different receivers. And I think that it would be the first time in league history that 10 different players caught a pass from, uh, you know, in an offense. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. This is second down and seven. And are we going to see a pass out to Fox here? We're going to throw it. It's not Tyree. And, oh, that pass is overthrown. They were looking for Anderson. That's the backups now in. And that's Willie Beeman, the backup for Sioux Falls, who doesn't get a ton of time. Willie Beeman. I love that name. So this is the eighth playoff, or excuse me, the ninth playoff game. No, had it right the first time. The eighth playoff game for Sioux Falls in their history. They played Queen City three times, Vegas two times, and Alaska two times. Um, which is pretty bizarre considering they've only had eight games. This pass to the outside is knocked away, so Sioux Falls' backups uh, can't get the job done, and they will uh, punt the football. But what's interesting is Sioux Falls hosted Queen City twice here at Liberty Park. They lost both times. Two, the, two times they were ousted in the first round by the same opponent. Then Sioux Falls conquered those demons and beat Queen City. They have then lost, since then, two straight games to Alaska. Have not been able to get past the storm. Will the third time be the charm there? And now you see Las Vegas on the other side of things. This is the second time. Their season has been ended by Sioux Falls. Will the third time be the charm against the Sparrows later down the line? Just just very odd how Sioux Falls' playoff opponents have fallen. And coming up next week, they'll take on Denver, Who's never been in? Uh, who hasn't been in the playoffs rather since uh, the San Antonio Vaquero days? Yeah, and I love these storylines that are building. You know, again, Vegas only being a, a two-season franchise allows allows them to kind of develop a, a sense of culture and history. And I think this would be a great one to watch moving forward. Raman against the backups just dumps that one off and out of play. Looking for Redford on the sideline. So. Vegas' season will end. Sioux Falls will play Denver at 2 o'clock. That will start quarterfinal Sunday. Uh, so Vegas, a very quick turnaround, and they'll have to get on a flight, and they'll have to play in the altitude. And you never know if there's snow in the forecast in Denver either. So uh, it'll be an interesting test for these Sparrows. Well, if I'm Sioux Falls, I want to play in all the, the running the running situations that I can. You know, give me rain games, give me snow games if I'm Sioux Falls because that makes the, the offense play right into what your defense does best, stop the run. Yeah, that's a great point. Good matchup with McChesney uh, and then uh, potentially with Zach Sandlin or Ray Bentley, whoever comes out of that 3-6 game between Dallas and Mexico City. A pass caught, first down to the 44. Raman to throw, and nearly picked off. Carpenter out there with his second pass deflection. And Sioux Falls just being has stout defense all day, and it's just continuing with their with some of their second string in there. They're just continuing to to execute their game plan perfectly. Second down, they've had to kind of abandon the run here of late. Raman, 23 of 35, 192 yards, 5.5 yards per attempt. That pass caught by Funk as he caught the corner, napping in the zone. First down to the 27. Raman stepping up in the pocket, just got rid of it. Pass caught again over the middle. That's John Blades to the 17. Where was this early? Nice crossing routes here. Raman 
Middle, touchdown. Hey there you go. John Blades with the score. May come against the backups, but at least Vegas, and Vegas offense is probably saying, just, just A.J. Levy, just don't go out there to return it. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the, after the last touchdown, the A.J. Levy return definitely took the air, uh, air out of their sails. So, you know, again, you close the gap. You're trying to make it a respectable game, so now you just got to come out and you got the, the two-minute warning. You'll get a free timeout, and hopefully you can hold Sioux Falls from putting any more points on the board. Well, Wild Card Weekend has been kind of a stinker. Each of the first three seasons of its existence have not had a single game finish, a one-possession ball game. The quarterfinals has really been when the playoffs have heated up. And uh, I'll pose this question to you, Stephen. Out of all the semifinal matchups, now that we know it, New Orleans at Baltimore, Mexico City at Dallas, Sioux Falls at Denver, and Tallahassee at Alaska, Who's your upset pick? Who do you think can go on the road and take it? Ooh. You know, after what I'm seeing here tonight, I mean, it may it may be too easy to say Sioux Falls, but I, I really do. I really like that they're the number one rush defense. I, I love what Colin Hart brings to their offense. I, I think that could be a potential could be a potential upset. Uh, Tallahassee and Alaska also is always uh, an interesting game. Uh, Alaska kind of owns that. But you never count Tallahassee out. So I, I, that Tallahassee could potentially uh, upset Alaska's plans for a championship. And this is really the first time in talking about Gerald Smith saying Sioux Falls probably the most dangerous team right now. They've won seven of eight. It's, it's actually quite stunning that Indianapolis was able to take out the Sparrows. Sparrows may have gotten caught napping just a little bit in the last week of the season. But um, that's their only loss here over the last couple of months. And... This was really the first time to this season we've really seen anybody completely take away Colin Hart, right? Only four catches for 17 yards in the passing game. And what happened? Sioux Falls immediately adjusted and did everything they needed to do and didn't even need Hart in the passing game. And that was one of the most remarkable things I think I've seen all season. We've hit the quip two-minute warning. Yeah, and, and, you know, Sioux Falls, they really do like to, to target Colin Hart. So, you know, for him to only walk away with four receptions today it is a great, is a, uh, it speaks volumes to Las Vegas' game plan. And, and uh, maybe Sioux Falls recognize that some teams are trying to shut him out. And uh, good job by them to, to throw in some plays with a couple extra layers. Third down and six at the 36. And Johnson will collect the tackle. Vegas will call timeouts and try to save face here just a little bit they'll get the ball back Jackson will drop back to return you know Raman's numbers not too bad 26 of 38 right. two touchdowns a pick 240 you know a lot of it is, has come late though too little too late Radford 5.6 yards a carry 112 yards on 20 carries I mean the stats aren't terrible for this Vegas team, but the stats definitely not telling the story tonight. Yeah, and Rahman, you know, as, as, as much as everybody's complaining about the rain effect in the passing game, I mean, he has completed just over 68% of his passes, so he was able to find success. It wasn't a, a terrible outing for him. Just, yeah, first half they could not get anything going, and then it was just a huge uphill, uphill battle for Vegas to have to fight in the second half. Uh, kind of put it away from him uh, really early. Well, there were two <laughs> things that, that the A.J. Levy kickoff return and the, and more importantly, the Jay Ringle touchdown, or I'm sorry, interception. The interception in the back of the end zone was just, a, I mean, that was soul crushing. Would have made it a three score game. Yep. And then you could even throw in the Merrick Itera dropped interception right yeah, in the end zone. Yeah, that was another one. Yep. Yeah, that was another big play. And yeah, I think Abner St. John had three or four chances to to generate a turnover and then just couldn't quite keep his hands on it. I mean, that's a 21-point swing. You're talking about Vegas potentially having th this being a 38-31 game. If Vegas scores, gets a pick six, prevents the touchdown, and scores instead of throwing an interception, this is just a seven-point game. Just with those three plays, it's really uh, incredible to think about that. 
when this is all said and done. Raman dumps it off to Redford. Time ticking away. 1.28 to go here in the fourth. I know the clock's running here. We're in hurry up, but I am, I'm really, really interested in watching the Mexico City-Dallas game. That rematch there, I, that, that's been a game I've been looking forward to. Pass incomplete. Yeah, especially after the first time. I mean, Mexico City has never given up that many points. Yep. Zach, yep. Zach Sandlin is a man-child. He is, you know, an MVP candidate. Um he has just been going off, and Mexico City is going to need a, a totally different defensive game plan than the one they had last time because the one they had last time did not work. Yeah, that burned them bad. And, and another interesting matchup, I think, is going to be uh, Xander Golden Diesel Powell versus the no-fly zone of you know the Baltimore Vulture. Yeah, how will uh, how will Baltimore deal with the aggressiveness of uh, of New Orleans, and will New Orleans? counter with maybe a little bit less aggression they got to stop t-roy gains in the in the swing pass as well as baltimore runs a lot of heavy sets baltimore and sioux falls fairly similar teams uh but each each of them have their own different wrinkles ramen's got to yeah, go ahead steve yeah very very similar offense uh very you know i i see it too on, on defense as well oh big play yeah nice uh, catch there by blades the uh, Fury will call their last time out. Well, playing out the stretch here at Liberty Park, you can see some seats empty as uh, some of the fans have started to file out of here in the bad weather, but uh, most of them have stuck around and they get a chance to see their Sparrows once again get to the quarterfinals. They don't have to face Alaska, but boy, if if Denver wouldn't have lost in week 13, they would have had to face Alaska. <laughs> so uh, fortunate for Sioux Falls, the Storm now on the opposite side of the bracket. And they may not have to see the Storm until the championship game at the rate they're playing that pass incomplete. Yeah, again, the madness leading into the <clears> – the madness coming into this, this weekend's games, you know, leading up to the wild card Thursday matchups was – Nobody knew if they were in or out. I mean, all the wild card teams, I think, it all shifted. The playoff picture just completely changed right there with the last week's games, and so it's been an interesting uh, development leading into the playoffs and the teams that got in and these storylines that unfolded today. Jordan Session, what did you stumble on? This is the Simulation Football League. All the players on the field you see right now are in the chat. Jay Ringgold plays for Sioux Falls. A.J. Levy plays for Sioux Falls. Uh, Jason1347 is Sioux Falls' quarterback, Julian Tyree, and uh, there were uh, plenty of Fury members here earlier tonight, but obviously their season is coming to an end. This is the wild card round of the playoffs, and the quarterfinals will be on our Twitch channel on Sunday. If you're at all interested in joining and uh, making a player and, and getting drafted in the rookie draft coming up in a couple of months, you can join our Discord server using the link down in the description. 58 seconds to go in the fourth. This has been a tough night for Queen City and Las Vegas. The two teams that got in on the final night of the season, Chicago and London, have plenty to say about whether or whether they would have been better competition for the Pride and the Sparrows uh, here over the last week. It's tough to prepare for the wild card in the quarterfinals. You only got 48 hours for each game. And it's a huge advantage to the teams that don't have to play in the wild card as they get the chance to sit back uh, for much of the week and just watch the games and see their upcoming opponents as Funk converts the fourth down for a first down. Yeah, the quick turnaround leading into the wild cards, you know, the, the teams that, that were automatically in the quarterfinals definitely have that chance to kind of watch and see what adjustments get made and adjust their strategy if needed. Yeah, Denver will have a lot of film to watch on Sioux Falls tonight. A lot of different wrinkles and a lot of different formations that they ran and passed out of tonight as Ramen's pass is intercepted. Pass the 30 on the return near side down the Vegas sideline. And that puts a bow on it. Bobby Carpenter, who's played some stellar ball uh, since uh, coming in for the Barnharts, gets an INT. Yeah, and that should about wrap it up. 
Uh, again, the, you know, the scoreboard doesn't necessarily reflect the outcome that you wanted if you're Las Vegas, but again, you know, you made the playoffs, you're in a position right. that a lot of teams wanted to be in. Uh, take that as a positive, learn from your mistakes here. Again, you've made the playoffs both years of your of your franchise, so just keep up what you're doing and, and don't hang your head. Come back strong and fight through next year. Victory formation for Willie Beeman and the rest of the Sparrows, and what a night it was for Sioux Falls. They're going to advance for the third consecutive season to the quarterfinals. And Vegas will, you know, a tremendous season. And it's not often that an expansion owner makes the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons. And that's what uh, Max Jackson has accomplished. Now he's got to figure out how to get a home playoff game and avoid Sioux Falls in that first round. Uh, but a tremendous season for Vegas as well. And and uh, to, to the rest of the SFL teams whose season have come to an end. But tonight it's about celebrating a Sioux Falls victory. They will take on Denver at 2 o'clock on Sunday in the quarterfinal round of the playoffs. Stephen, your final thoughts here is a very quick handshake and good game at midfield between John Bond and Jason McGee. Well, I, I really, again, I, I just, I cannot stop talking about Colin Hart and the game that he had. Uh, you know, Tyree also had a really great game, came out, you know, 13 straight passes completed, uh, pretty much hit every receiver available to him. Um, just Sioux Falls just executed perfectly today. Um, just absolutely gave a show to their home crowd. By the way, we've updated our credits here at the end of the show to reflect uh, the people that have contributed um, the most to this uh, season 12. It has been a long and winding road here in season 12. Season 13 will kick off in the summer. It's a wide open game out there, folks. All eight teams left remaining. It's hard to say that none of them have the chance or opportunity to win a championship. It is a wide open field. And, uh, Hacker, I believe this is your last uh, this is your last call of the season. Is that right? Yes, sir. I, so, I, and I do appreciate the opportunity to, to be in here and and fill in uh, get in for a playoff game. It's a it's a great opportunity for me, and and I had a great time. It, it, it's been a great season. I learned a lot. This is my first season broadcasting, doing play by play. So I mean, I I, I had a really great time. And and if you guys will have me, I'll, I'll come back and do it again next season. You were awesome. Thanks so much. I want to know who who do you have? Who's going to win it all? Uh, this season, I would like I would like it to be Dallas because I have a man crush on Zach Sandlin. <laughs> uh, but I think I think my gut right now, my gut's telling me to to ride with Alaska. Alaska again? You're going three time I don't champs? Want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. But that's what my gut said. <laughs> well, they did get the number one seed on that last day of the season, and the championship will once again go through Alaska unless somebody can knock them off. Charles Doherty, you were outstanding on stats as usual. And for Stephen Hacker, I'm Cameron Irvine. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music. And you've been watching the SFL Network on YouTube. Your extraordinary Everest player of the game. We're about to find out. Maybe Tyree, could be Colin Hart. And they're gonna give it to Colin Hart, 234 yards and three touchdowns on the ground on just 15 carries. 16 receiving yards, did have a receiving touchdown, and the Sparrows get the blowout win. For all of us in the Simulation Football League, I'm Cameron Irvine. Good night, everybody.